energy efficiency is really a big important part of what we do. It's in our genes. As far as the EU is concerned, I think what we should focus on is trying to find a solution that is internationally acceptable rather than a regional solution. And more importantly, and I think that's important, that's what we can show, we actually have the technologies that can make it work. Being environmentally progressive is just good business. You know, as an industry, we have worked very, very hard to reduce the noise of our aircraft. We've been focusing on efficiency, and as we look to the future, we'll work very, very hard to make sure we bring the right technologies, the right products to the market that will help our customers reduce their cost, make them more efficient. We're looking forward to 2050, where fuels begin becoming more expensive, there's more people in the world, the air traffic is going to increase considerably, so environmental conditions are extremely important. With the rising cost of fuel, the economic interests of the airlines is exactly aligned with the idea of reducing CO2, and that's an enormously powerful uh, incentive. To achieve the step changes required for to reduce the emission uh, by 50 percent, which is the target for the 2050 now, uh, there needs to be innovation. It's all about having the right technology to bring the cost down, to make it operationally more sense, and just to make the stock much better. The Commission and the EU and regulators, they can put a framework, but we as industry, we have to get it done. We have so you know, the gear turbofan, which will be commercially up in the air very soon, as of next year already, with uh, more than 15% less of emissions and 50%, so half, uh, half of the noise reduction. With new aircraft like the A350, which will be around 25% more fuel efficient, will significantly reduce carbon burn and significantly reduce noise as well. It's very clear that the principal impediment to the expansion of air transportation in Europe and North America is aircraft noise. And if we don't do something, don't worry about the CO2 because you won't be able to operate more flights in and out of major airports. Noise and CO2 are a global issue. So what we would really like to see is a global solution to the problems that we face in aviation to get together all around the world to make sure that we can improve the system. The regulators uh, can put a framework in place, uh, but it's really up to industry. Uh, and as far as we're concerned, that's us working with our customers and working with partners potentially going forward to find the right solutions. Change is uh, quite long term, so we have to start doing the research early. Fuel's going to become a rare commodity, so sustainable fuels, alternative fuels are being looked at. We need the biofuels. Uh, biofuels are an important part of the future of aviation, and now that producers know that they have assured sales if they can get the price down, we see the industry starting to move in that direction. We have to figure out a way to make these fuels more um, efficiently. It's really going to be about price and cost, but probably more importantly, it's about the feedstocks that we use. We have to make sure that we can get high yielding crops that are available in multiple locations because the last thing we want to do is move fuel from one place to another. We want it locally available. Currently the cost of aviation fuel made by a bio route is significantly higher than that of a fossil fuel jet A1. So we need incentives from government uh, and then with those incentives we'll see private investors uh, uh, invest in, in the technology which is available today. There can be a lot more investment uh, from industry into research at universities. Uh, currently I, I don't think they follow is as much as Japan or even countries such as Brazil. If the investment doesn't increase that uh, Europe will be in danger of falling behind. One of the biggest constraints on the greening of aviation is not just designing and building better airplanes and, and engines like the geared turbofan, it's the airlines actually have to be able to afford to buy these 50, 100, 200 million dollar airplanes. So policies that suck cash out of aviation are deleterious because indeed it leaves the airlines cash poor and they can't buy quieter, more efficient airplanes.